Well, HARP, you know, is a, is a different kind of project, and there is a sister project to HARP in northern Norway. And I recently met a, a man who was a helicopter pilot uh, in Vietnam and then was transferred to the Alaska area, and he told me that there's at least 12 facilities that are related to HARP globally. And he personally saw this in northern Alaska. I wonder if that's a reason why our weather is so screwed up, Stuart. I, I absolutely agree. What HARP is doing is creating a shield in the ionosphere over the Earth and trying to create weather manipulation so that we think there are such things as global warming when, in fact, it's just a manipulation of our weather and uh, geological events as well. Let me... Uh... Let me ask you about the success of Montauk. Do you know if they accomplished anything that was just truly extraordinary? Well, I think that they did accomplish their goal. And I and right now, 100% of the Earth is uh, affected by mind control or scalar waves that are transmitted now from satellites in space that completely ring the Earth and are enhanced by ground uh, antenna that we see a cell tower microwave transmissions so that at any moment they can transmit a mind control wave to specific areas of the earth uh, to specific people. And a lot of what's happening now with the chemtrails is also creating a web or a network around the earth like a shield or radio wiring so that it's like a grid that covers the earth and they can pinpoint very specific locations now and transmit whatever they wish to, to create. Yeah. You, you know, we, we've just got to not let fear get to us because that's the control system's most potent weapon. Hmm. Well, I think that, um, you know, the spraying from the air, uh, I mean, I've been to 50 countries over the last 20 years, and um, even when I visit my, my friend, uh, Kredo Mutwa, the Zulu shaman in South Africa near the Kalahari Desert, you look up in the sky and the bloody chemtrails are there. They're everybody where. And there's, a, there, there's um, obviously a reason for that. And one of the things I've learned over this 20 years of research is that there's never one reason for anything. Mm -hmm. um, there are multiple reasons. Part of it is uh, destabilizing the human immune system part of it is creating a sub reality around uh, the planet in to manipulate the energetic field that we're living in every day and um, I, I'm absolutely convinced that um, the chemtrails and the manipulation of the lower levels of uh, the uh, energetic field, Earth's energetic field, which we live in and experience all the time, um, is connected in, in, in part to, to the HARP transmissions, um, which, uh, of course, HARP has many, many multiple um, levels of uh, technology and applications, and one of them is literally uh, creating mass uh, fields of thought, which we decode as our own. Um, I had a, a friend in America who um, told me... Um, few weeks ago that she, her husband, um, her uh, son and a son's uh, partner uh, had exactly the same dream about uh, uh, Barack Obama in the same night, um, uh, which was a dream saying that he was a good guy and a wonderful guy and all the rest of it, which, uh, you know, a day's research will show you is a nonsense. But um, and, and, and she said immediately that she felt that some kind of technology had been broadcast and people had picked it up. What they're um, seeking to access is, is the pineal gland um, to, hmm. to literally transmit um, thought, perceptions, dreams um, um, into, your, into your reality. We need to be aware of this because um, not every dream is a, is a premonition of, 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 oh, you know, all the rest of it. They can, they can be... Uh, uh, broadcast out and we can we can uh, decode them and, th and thinking it's a dream we're having when it's actually something we're picking up and that's what's what what part of the the harp system is and i i think that um this chemtrail stuff and, and many many other things that are being dropped are, are in, in part um connected when you're bombarded with electromagnetic waves and microwaves and uh, basically traumatized and tortured, uh, very few can survive that kind of life. And in fact, a lot of the subjects were children, and so they just didn't make it. Children of maybe some of the people who work there? No, these uh, initially they used uh, orphans, they would use the children who were in foster care, uh, 
people who they consider to be expendable and would not be missed. Um, then later on, as the subject, as the as the program progressed, then they would start taking children uh, from conventional families. People, uh, you, there are so many kidnappings in this country, especially you notice it spiked in the 1970s and 80s, and these children were basically used for the mind control experiments. They knew, especially people with genetics of blonde hair, blue eyes, red hair, green eyes. Such people have an enzyme in their genetics that allow for mind control to be more acceptable to the mind and the body. What did they do with these children afterwards? Well, their bodies were, those who didn't make it, their bodies were disposed of. They would uh, burn them, bury them under the ocean. They would dispose of them in whatever manner was convenient at the time. What about those who did make it? Well, a lot of them, unfortunately, are in such a mental state that they're not able to function very well in society. A lot of the people that we see in mental institutions, a lot of the people that we see in, in, in prisons, uh, many of them have been subjected to these mind control experimentations. One of the people that I did meet over the years, also connected to government, told me that he knows in a very remote area outside of Reno, Nevada, the government has a facility where they actually store some of the subjects of mind control who are being used for continuous study under the guise of it being a home for the elderly or insane. Now, this control, this mind control series of experiments, Stuart, what did they want to accomplish? Bottom line is they wanted to create a global robotic society, very much like you'd see on Star Trek, the Borg where everyone has a specific function, a specific designation. No one asks any questions. You just go through your life doing what you're told to do in a specific function, and you never deviate from that. And in that way, it ensures a society that does not change, and the control system stays intact. My gosh. And you know what? They're, they're pretty much there. When I look out there in the public and I hear how people react to things, they just believe whatever they're told. No one questions anything. I guess there's a few people who, who like myself, who, who make a lot of noise. But for the most part, people just follow along and don't question anything. It's they're, like the Pied Piper of Hamlet. Yeah, they're afraid. They're afraid because they're, what will the government say? What will they do to me? So they just go along with everything. You see this in the airports. You see this in, in, in office buildings. Everyone is terrified of going outside the box. David, I have to ask you this question, too, because if somebody uh, knew I was going to be doing this show with you and they wanted me to ask you this question, and I'm curious what your answer is. Now, there's some... There's some proof out there that there are electromagnetic weaponry, things that can interfere with people's consciousness, their electromagnetic fields as a form of stopping people, making them sick, giving them cancer, those kinds of things. What's your, what's your take on that whole topic? What do you feel is truthful about that? I, I think there's no question that's true. Um, yes. I mean, I, I've, I've gone through some um, amazing, funnily enough, uh, electromagnetic attacks myself. Um, uh, they've actually pretty much stopped now, funnily enough. But around the end of um, 2009, right across uh, January and February, um, every night, um, I, I would, virtually every night, I would wake up and there would be these tremendous electromagnetic fields in the bedroom. Um, and uh, they sometimes look like uh, spider, metallic like spider things and all the rest of it. But then there was a, tr you, you, it wasn't that, you know, you could just see them. Uh, you could feel them very powerfully too. I remember one, one night um, uh, they were uh, disrupting my uh, sleep so much that I got up out of the bedroom and I walked into my lounge and I, I lay on the, the sofa and um, I, uh, I fell asleep there and I woke up again. And I looked across, um, and next to the television set was this, like, you know, catharine wheels, these uh, fireworks, catharine wheels. Mm -hmm. There was um, a, a spinning um, uh, a, a kind of catharine wheel of um, not, it wasn't colored um, energy, and it was spinning with extraordinary speed. And in the middle was, again, a spider-like, metallic spider-like uh, thing going out, like, a, like the core of it. And um, I watched it. It wasn't that it was just there for a few seconds and then went. I watched it for about a minute, minute and a half. 
And I then I got up, and I thought, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see what this is doing. I, I walked towards it, and as I walked very close towards it, it had gone. And um, this uh, this went on for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then and then just suddenly stopped. I have it, you know, kind of maybe two or three times a month now, but but nothing like as intense as I did then. What that was all about, I have um, I have no idea. But um, you, you know, that was and that at the time when when I was going through that experience, it was disrupting my health. Um, I, you know, my my rheumatoid arthritis, which is not good at the best of times, was very very bad then, and 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 I had a, one or two other health uh, uh, situations. Um, but again, you know, you, you, I, I'll be honest. What I, what I used to do, I used to I used to wake up, uh, turn over, see all this metallic uh, electromagnetic stuff around me, and I would. I would, shall I say, give it the finger, and then um, uh, <laughs> then I would turn over and and, 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 go, and go back to sleep. It was quite funny because instead of all oh, they're out to get me or whatever, it's like yeah. okay, whatever, 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 throw anything at me. I'm not bothered. This fascinates me. So uh, tell me how it could occur and what the motive is behind it. You know, for the last uh, century, in order to uh, create. Uh, control over people the best way is to instill fear and so we've seen this with world war ii the fear of the nazis then the cold war and now we have the terrorist fear everyone's afraid and trying to unite against that some of the fear could be real but maybe magnified yes but of course the terrorists are creation of the new world order and would not exist on their own very possible yeah uh there's no way that they could have possible uh, well it's a long story but so the next thing is to create a fear beyond this planet that would force the planet to unite under one world government. In other words, create the situation so the solution can be imposed. If we are told that we are being attacked by an unknown alien civilization with amazing weapons, imagine the fear and terror that would pervade the Earth. Everybody would band together correct and demand that the countries of the earth do something together to stop this threat yes. and of course then we would have a new world order government a singular government that controls the planet which we already have anyway but now would be officially wanted by the people that would be a public and then we would have this imaginary battle they have something called Blue Beam Project. And Blue Beam Project is holographic images that are projected into the atmosphere and can look like anything. It can look like a, a religious figure. It can look like a UFO fleet. It could look like missiles. They've been targeting and practicing with this since the early 1960s when they actually tested it mm. over Havana Harbor when a U.S. submarine uh, projected the image of the Virgin Mary over Havana and was seen by all the people in the evening streets. 